you know, for a long time, I thought my mom just straight up hated me. I thought she had no uh, type of love for me. And, you know, that was hard to, to, to go through. But, you know, like everybody has their, uh, their sh you know, has, has a past. Everybody has a, a story. And, you know, she, she's gone through hell. She's been to hell and back like three times. She was physically abused as well as sexually. You know, her mom tried to like pull her teeth out with pliers and beat the shit out of her constantly. And my mom like would run away all the time. You know, she'd sleep on Bart. She just did everything she could to escape. And unfortunately, what I know about my grandfather is he thought that pedophilia was like cool, essentially. He was like, okay, yeah, this is, this is, yeah, there's nothing wrong with this. This was the 60s. Everybody was questioning every aspect of sexuality. He thought children should be allowed to express their sexuality. He assured us that he understood uh, that that had to stay theoretical. Uh, apparently, he did not keep his assurance. There are people with a very different set of moral imperatives that most of us would consider to be criminal. So I got to share this with you. I was watching one of my uh, one of my shows I like called Last Chance You. It's about junior college football, and this poor kid starts telling his story um, about a difficult upbringing. And as he goes on, you know, he's living with his great aunt. And I'm like looking at this house and they have runic writing. They have mother goddess figures everywhere. They have the, the god of Pan as a statue. Um, they have all these, all these alarm bells are going off, right? And it ends with child pedophilia. Now, in the spiritual world, you know, the, the Bible's clear. When you rebel against God, he's going to give you over to a reprobate mind. So many of these occultists are going to have perversions, right? They're going to have these things, these lusts that are basically of the devil because you're, you're separating yourself from God. He's not leading you. So the enemy starts leading you. And it's all connected to mother goddess worship and these occult pagan belief systems and it just blew my mind that his grandmother is known for this book mists of avalon i'm just going to do a quick like rundown right 1983 a historical fantasy novel by american writer marion zimmer bradley in which the author relates the authorian legends from the perspective of the female characters the book follows the traje trajectory of morgane a priestess fighting to save her celtic religion in a country where christianity threatens to destroy the pagan way of life the epic is fo focused on the lives of Morgane and the other women of Arthurian legend. The Mists of Avalon is in stark contrast to most other retellings of the Arthurian tales, which consistently cast Morgan Le Fay as a distant one, distant one-dimensional evil sorceress, with little or no, ex no explanation given for her antagonism to the round table. In this case, Morgaine is presented as a woman with unique gifts, right? Oh, they're, they're, of course, instead of a sorceress, now she's a woman with unique gifts and responsibilities at the time of enormous political and spiritual upheaval, who is called upon to defend her indi indigenous heritage against impossible odds, right? Oh, you know, so making the good bad and the bad good, right? That's what the Bible says they do. They flip it. So now the witch is the good one. Right in the Bible, it says witches used to murder children, used to sacrifice children, and now you're seeing a story, the family into witchcraft is what they are, and there and there's pedophilia involved. Is that a coincidence? I don't know. <clears throat> it says here, when Morgan is eleven years old <clears throat> and Arthur six, an attempt of murder is made on Arthur's life. Their maternal aunt, the high priestess of Vivian, of priestess Vivian, arrives in Carleone and advises Uther to have Arthur fostered away from the court for his own safety. Uther agrees and also allows Vivian to take Morgaine to Avalon, where she is trained as a priestess of the mother goddess. What did I show in my other video about 
they're tapping into the spiritual world through psychedelics and they're encountering a mother goddess figure, right? So if you're, if you're doing witchcraft, you're probably encountering the same spirit, the same mother goddess spirit. It's always mother goddess because it's got to be opposite of the Bible. So the Bible says the Lord God is a male. And so Satan wants you to believe that the mother goddess is the truth, the opposite, right? He turns everything upside down. <clears throat> During this period, Morgane becomes aware of the rising tension between the old pagan and the new Christian religions. After several years of training, Morgane is initiated, initiated as a priestess of the mother. So I'm like, you're not going to write a book about being a priestess of mother goddess worship if you're not into it yourself, are you? I mean, it doesn't make much sense. I wouldn't just start writing a book about that unless I knew about it, you know? And I find it interesting that this runic writing shows up in their house. And <clears throat> it looks just like this. And I also found it interesting that the Hobbit movie, you know, um, Peter Jackson is into this as well. Now, I'm not saying he's a pedophile, um, but Hollywood is involved, you know, and he's got this runic symbol on the Hobbit cover. The same runic symbol that found in this, this priestess's house. So is that a coincidence? I don't know. You know, the Hobbit also has the Ouroboros, right, on the cover of one of them, the serpent eating its tail, which is an occultic symbol as well. D Greek magical d tradition and was adopted as a symbol in Gnosticism, and most notably, alchemy, right? I'm not going to go over that. You've, some of you have heard that a million different times. The serpent or the dragon eating its own tail. <clears throat> Originating in ancient Egyptian iconography. So, you know, are the this is all connected, right? And it's all it all leads to this this guy having beliefs that children should be able to explore their sexuality. So let me show you their house. My mom and my dad split early on. My mom was doing it by herself for pretty much my entire life. This is my great aunt Diana's house. Four years I've been living with her. Welcome to Grey Haven. We moved in here in 1971. Coco, really? Uh, just about everybody in the family is a writer. The ones down there were written by John DeCleese, my husband. And the ones behind you on the wall were written by me. Uh, some of them in the middle were written in the world created by Marion Zimmer Bradley, RJ's grandmother, who wrote Mists of Avalon which was quite the bestseller. <clears throat> you know, in almost 50 years, many people have lived with us and most of them left things. When RJ moved in, the some previous athletics mostly involved uh, sword, sword and shield. He is the first of his type here, yeah. We have all learned a lot more about football than we knew when he moved in. Coco. Greyhaven is a home that my grandmother, my mom's mom, bought for the family. See up here, it says Odin, the god Odin on the wall. The pan statue's coming up. It's been a home for writers. Look at, look at that. That's very uh, telling right there. You see the runic writing on the top of this door and this this... That's what witches make. I'm, um, when you look it up, it's like, you know, I found this article, Weaving and Spinning Women, Witches and Pagans by Max Dashu. Right? This article is very, <laughs> they don't like Christianity, right? It says, history has been written by the victors, in the case of Europe, by elite Christian men. These men may have wanted to believe that their views were widely held, but Dashu suggests that they were not, right? So these pagan practices are very popular, is what this article is saying, more popular than we realize. And it says here, our European ancestors did not just sit down and get on with the work of spinning and weaving. They invoked female powers, goddesses, ancestresses, and spirits when they began to spin and used their distaffs, wooden sticks or poles that held the unspun flax or wool as divining tools and magic wands. Here's an idea. Why not replace ritual swords and knives with the distaffs, you know? Priestess castigated women for invoking non-Christian deities while they wove and for tying pagan symbols onto their looms. You know, so 
just like the you know just like the psychedelic drugs they're they're contacting deities and a mother goddess figure right the female powers the feminism the goddess the goddess spirit right they're they're invoking this this spirit and the bible says you'll be defiled by them you know so just found that interesting mainly science fiction and fantasy my grandma was a world-renowned writer. She wrote a pretty famous book called Mists of Avalon. She feminized a lot of stuff. Her big bestseller, The Mists of Avalon, was a feminist take on, on King Arthur. She was writing the, a world she wanted to live in. It was this kind of pseudo-medieval and empowered women. You know, it was huge in Berkeley, but it was, it was huge everywhere. And uh, I always had customers who thought she was just the, the greatest writer ever. That's about as big a success as you can have, I think, as an author. Everything just kind of blew first. So she had all kinds of money all of a sudden. So then she went and bought a house. She continued to write books and spinoffs of that. And yeah, that's pretty much the gist of my grandma. Just like what you can see on the surface. You know, when you have a house this size, you almost have to entertain in it. We have some really, really big parties here. Every New Year's Eve, for instance, we have Viennese waltzes all night. And uh, twice a year, we have a bardic circle where we have one or two dozen poets, and, and that goes on through the evening. Now, Coco. you see, you're going to get sprayed, Mom. You're going to get sprayed. sprayed. Often just showing him the, the sprayer will do it. Uh, so this goes along. <laughs> oh, I was going to say. Reagan was not smart enough to figure out what space was all about. Man, I don't know what the fuck he's talking about over there. But they sold it to him on the basis of the Star Wars movie because it was like a cowboy film and he could understand a cowboy film. And they said, we <sighs> this whole defense system that would not work. It's really, I guess, just going to be us three. It's kind of weird. We usually have eight. <laughs> <clears throat> There's the Pan statue, right? Playing his, uh, playing his flute, right? The goat god. Then you got this this idol, the golden idol, with her blindfolded with the scales, right? The balances. Then you got, looks like a broomstick in the background, right? This wrapping around it. Oh, pretty strange. They may have lifted the fire watch. I've never seen so many traumatized people online. And with all the uh, power on and off, I'm not making chili this week, so it might turn out to be the week I try chicken paprikash. Mm. What's that? It's what Jonathan Harker has on the way to Castle Dracula at the beginning of the book. I read that book in sixth chicken. grade, so I don't, I don't remember what that is. It, it's a, it's a Hungarian chicken with, made with a lot of paprika. But it's very good indeed. It's hard to relate to people who I live with, you know, just based off of uh, personalities and how we're different, whatnot. Whenever I'm here, I'm typically just to myself in my room, watching film or drawing. These hands right here, it took me about 45 minutes to draw the hands. I mean, look at that. I mean, that's like when it, when there's something inside, you know, the art, art means something, right? You're, you're like expressing what's inside. And that is like the devil with his hands around this boy reading a book. I mean, that just doesn't come out of nowhere, right? I mean, you can call me a crazy Christian if you want. But I've seen enough artwork from these occultists to know that I don't think this kid knows what he's doing, right? I mean, he, he seems pretty innocent of the whole matter. But he's just, that spirit is around him, right? That spirit is is manipulating you know, his surroundings and like, I feel bad for the kid. It's not his fault, but look, look at these drawings of his. They're really difficult. I don't even know why. I didn't know hands were that complicated to draw, but they, they fucking are. And then, I don't know what this was supposed to be, but again, just drew it just out of nowhere. Yeah, I like, I like scary shit. 
Normally it's football stuff. I draw a lot of football stuff. You know, I, I want to like do something that expresses myself, and the way I express myself is through football. I had a really unstable upbringing, and so like football has been that family for me essentially over the years. And so to, just to like have like people believe in me enough on the field to throw me the ball, like I can't put it to words what it feels like to have that ball in my hands. Without football, I think I would have went down a very different. Route. I just I, I don't have an explanation, truthfully. I'm used to it, you know, being uh, kind of just overlooked and uh, not believed in. I basically grew up feeling very isolated. My dad never seemed to want anything to do with me. I knew my dad was a bit of an alcoholic. I knew he had struggled with some addiction early on. I knew that he didn't like coming home. It was really just my mom and, and my two brothers. He was violent with RJ when he was Five years old, he went too far. I took the boys and I left. There's a lot of missed Christmases, a lot of broken promises. He always had an excuse for why he couldn't make it to a game or why he couldn't set time aside to hang out. It was rough growing up with my mom. She does suffer from mental illness. I would get woken up every morning at five in the morning till my mom yelling at me. It was just horrible. I would just sit around at the high school after football practice till like eight o'clock at night because I knew that the moment I walked through that door, it was gonna be hell. In 2015, we moved to Texas because my mom's husband, Mike, got a job out there. They had some problems with alcoholism as well. It just got really bad and we were fighting every day and I was looking at mom, I was like, mom, I'm not staying here, bro. When he left Texas, his father refused to give him a place to live. The reason that he was given was because RJ was a lost cause according to his father. A couple weeks later, my brother moves back. He welcomes Jim with open arms. It's just, uh, that's how I ended up there. I didn't have anywhere else to go. I think he keeps a lot locked up inside. I don't blame him. You know, the fact he ended up here indicated at least there was some problem. <laughs> oh, you're shaking. It's okay. Yep, see, there's the mother goddess, right? That's what they believe, that they believe in in her, but not the Lord God. And I find it interesting, there's lightning coming out of her hands, right? What is, light, what is Satan associated with is lightning. I don't know if that has anything, you know, if that's connected, but... ...moral imperatives that most of us would consider to be criminal. They idolize my father, and how they can defend men who prey on children is beyond my understanding. Yeah, that's, unfortunately, that's my grandpa. Um, you know, I don't even like calling him my grandpa, I just call him Walter. And he died in prison before I was born. If we only had perfect people writing, there would be nobody to write. What we should be doing is honoring what people manage to achieve despite their flaws. That, I think, is uh, particularly important in this family. They've taken great care of me. They've given me a place to stay, kept food in my belly, and a bed to sleep in, and I, I'll be forever grateful to them. You know, but that being said, like, it's made me uncomfortable. It's made me kind of, uh, kind of ashamed, in a way, for, like, you know, like I'm related to people who were, you know, enabling this and who were a part of, you know, these awful acts of uh, sexual abuse. And so and I'm not accusing anybody of anything who currently lives there. I just want to set that straight for the record. I have had a standing offer to RJ. I will give you a plane ticket day or night if you want to leave there and come and live with me. I'm not welcome there. This is another mother mother goddess with what looks like a serpent going up the arm. As far as I'm concerned, he's living in hell, but he's prevailing over that too. It also adds perspective living there. It's like, damn, like, I'm so sorry, mom. He had to live through that. I'm sure that had a lot to do with the way she interacted with me and my brothers. 
So in a way, it's, I think it's been therapeutic. So I wanted to share his story because it's uh, interesting that the connection is there and that pedophilia is rampant behind the scenes. You know, it says here in the New York Times, it says images of child sex abuse have reached a crisis point on the Internet, spreading at unprecedented rates, in part because tech platforms and law enforcement agencies have failed to keep pace with the problem. But less is understood about the issue under underlying it all. What drives people to sexually abuse children? You know, they're calling it a mental disorder. Um, you know, they're, they're downplaying it in a way that these people can't help themselves. Uh, but I think it's a spiritual disorder. And I think as we grow farther away from God, our society is going to have more cases of perversion. And it's going to only get worse the further we pull away from the Lord, right? You know, what's crazy is my wife was like, you know, I was showing her the house. I'm like, look how witchy this house is. Like, look at all these, look at all this mother goddess stuff. Look at like, you know, the, the mom is, a uh, is having a mental disorder. She goes, you know what, before they even talked about the grandpa or the pedophilia, she goes, I bet she was sexually abused. And sure enough, she was, it's not a mental disorder. And uh, the cure is Jesus Christ. I just wish that these people could understand that because uh, he can cure that. And uh, <clears throat> it's the only way we're going to pull out of this is through faith in the Bible, faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, that's why we're in the mess we're in, because we took it out of schools. We took it out of our life. We fell for the information that the devil pushes through science. You know, they use the... They use the medical science to convince everybody that all the other science is real. Just because the medical science works doesn't mean the rest of the science is flawless, right? They're proved wrong all the time, but we fell for it. We were indoctrinated with it through the school system. And now most of us don't believe in God. We think we were monkeys. <laughs> so, yeah, we've, we've, uh, we've fallen pretty far away from the truth, so. Anyway, I'll talk to you on the next one. God bless you and your families.